From Nimrod onwards, Babylon's supreme rulers had derived their authority basically from three titles, king, god and high priest. Their kingship gave them political or temporal authority, while their high priesthood and godhood gave them infallible spiritual authority. Both earthly and heavenly authority converged in the one rule. Now when Babylon was overthrown by the Medo-Persians, their king, high priest and god at the time was Belshazzar. Belshazzar was killed and so for the first time there was no direct successor to rule over the earthly Babylonian kingdom, but more importantly for us, there was no direct successor to the high priesthood of the mysteries, no figurehead. Not only that, but all the priests and sorcerers of the religion fled from Babylon to Pergamos, which is situated in modern day western Turkey. There was this brief moment of chaos. However, when the priests arrived in Pergamos from Babylon, they set about turning it into the new power base for the mysteries and established a new central college for the religion in the area. Perhaps more importantly, they placed the king of Pergamos at the time into the vacant seat of spiritual power left by Belshazzar, and he was hailed as the new high priest of the religion. And so for a time at least, the power base of the mystery religion moved from Babylon to Turkey. It is at least partly for this reason that the Lord refers to Pergamos as Satan's seat in Revelation 2.13. This is part of the building that existed there. Like the Ishtar Gate, this monument to Satan survives until the modern day in Berlin, Germany, having been taken there by Kaiser Wilhelm II, who was fascinated with the occult in 1902. He was well aware of its significance, and upon seeing it rebuilt in Germany, Wilhelm stated that it was the proudest moment of his reign. As the power base of the mysteries in ancient Pergamos, this monument may perhaps be considered the literal seat of Satan, a scene of ancient emperor worship and ritual slaughter of Christians. It was also during this brief time at Pergamos, which incidentally means height or elevation, where the god Aesculapius was worshipped in the form of a serpent. The name Aesculapius in Greek means instructing snake, and he was worshipped as a god of healing and one who enlightened the souls of men by the power of the sun. He was supposed to appear in serpent form and was symbolised as one entwined around a pole. In his temple were kept numerous live snakes and the people would come to bathe in the water of the sacred spring where they would apparently be given instruction for their healing. So it's interesting to find that this logo is still used for healthcare today. You may also see the following. This is called a Cajicus and is actually a result of confusion by people in the late 19th century who thought it represented the same thing as Aesculapius. This symbol has ancient associations with commerce, eloquence, deception and trickery, but it's still used for healthcare today regardless. You may notice it includes a winged sun disc. This symbol is normally associated with Egypt but was used by several other cultures. Thomas Milton Stewart explains. Horus, the virgin-born redeemer of the Egyptians, came into the world to destroy the enemies of the great sun god Ra. Therefore Horus changed himself into the form of the winged sun disc and took with him the goddesses Nekbet and Uachit in the form of two serpents. After their successful war upon the enemies of Ra, Horus commanded Thoth, the god of secret wisdom, that the winged sun disc with the erect serpent should be brought into every sanctuary of all the gods of all the lands of the south and north. A similar sculpture exists on Mount Nebo in Jordan. This sculpture is called the Brazen Serpent, and so we have a mountain named after the god Nebo with a serpent and sun disc at the top. So associated with many of our healthcare systems, we have the serpent, so-called secret wisdom, sun discs and symbolism associated with deception. If we place our healthcare systems in the hands of that serpent and look to him for secret wisdom for healing, rather than God, don't be surprised if it doesn't work or bring sickness and drug dependencies instead of health. It is estimated that well over half of all Americans are now on prescription drugs for chronic illnesses and that they now kill 300% more people than illegal drugs do. Not to mention that we now use our healthcare for death rather than healing and abortions, and we'll come to that again later. The situation at Pergamos lasted for several hundred years until around 133 BC when Attalus, the last king of Pergamos, died and left in his will all his dominions to the Roman people. 
Thus the kingdom of Pergamos merged entirely into Rome, and once again no one could openly lay claim to the title of high priest of the Babylonian mysteries. The position was vacant once more. At the time, the Roman Republic did not consider its rulers to be gods in the Babylonian style. This all changed, however, with Julius Caesar.